Amen. Glory to God. But how thrilled I, you know, I was thinking when Rahab uh, come out, out of that house, God saved her in her household, but I'll tell you, he tore, he, he sure didn't leave her there in uh, Jericho, did he? He brought her out. Amen. And how many know when you're born again, you're born again where you're at? Some's born again in the Baptist church. I know that's hard for some of you to believe, but it's the truth. Some people are born again in the Baptist church. Some people are born again in the Methodist church. Some people are born again on the sidewalk. Some people are born again in the car. Some people are born again sitting on a bar stool. Amen. Amen. But the thing is, praise God, I'm going to have to make another trip. But get my the thing is, he, he, he resurrected Lazarus, but he said, Lucy, and let him go. Get them grave clothes. And how many know, even though we were quickened, we had a lot of grave clothes that bound us up. The Bible said he was bound hand and foot. Amen. Amen. But the Lord didn't say, I'm going to loose him and let him go. He told them men standing around and said, you loose him and let him go. And how many know that's what's been happening to you ever since you've been born again? Amen. Men have been put in your life and women of God to take away that wrapping and layer by layer, line upon line, precept upon precept, Amen. here a little and there a little, for with stammering lips and another tongue will I speak unto this people, saying this is the refreshing and this is the rest wherewith he hath caused the weary to rest. Who shall he teach knowledge? And who shall he cause to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Somebody amen. say amen. amen. And so strong, uh, strong meats for the full of age. And so is the new wine. But the milk is desired by sincere babes. The Bible says so. As sincere uh, as babes desire the sincere milk of the word. But the purpose is not to keep them on milk, but that the word of God said that you may what? Grow. Oh, hallelujah. Thereby, Paul got to those, and what was that group he came to and taught, taught them the kingdom and they refused it. Uh, Thessalonians. They wouldn't hear him. But then he went on and found another group of people called the Berenians. And they had an open spirit. Ooh, hallelujah. In the book of Acts. And they reasoned everything out that Paul said by the word. And bless God, they got it. Amen. Amen. And I'll tell you, you ought to shout tonight because you was able to get it. Because there's a thousand out there just like you that ain't been able to get it. The veil has not come off of their minds so they can see it. But I'll tell you, 2 Corinthians, the third chapter said, Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away, and we all with open face beholding, as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into that same image from glory unto glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. For the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen. Amen. Liberty. Praise God for His Word tonight. I want to read that scripture I read Sunday morning out of John 2. Refresh your memories. Hallelujah. I've read so much today, I'll probably preach all over the Bible tonight. But I wanted to, I got to read them scriptures, and I said, well, this bunch of these people's wrong. That, that, thing's, that thing's got to die. That's got to pass away. Ain't no need me trying to hang on to it or preserve it. Not even if it makes somebody mad. Right. And brother, it will. That heaven and earth don't leave quietly. The Bible said it great and all this. Hallelujah. Oh, it won't be hallelujah. And glory to God and thank you, Jesus. And it'll be rebukes. Amen. Praise God. I think so many times about that little man come up that mountain cursing out David. Remember him? Joab said, you want me to kill him now or wait till he gets up here? 
David said, I don't want you to do nothing. The Lord sent him. He knew I needed the blessing today. Glory to God. said, he made that fella curse me all the way across that field because he knew I was going to get blessed over him cursing me. <laughs> Glory, that's true, folks. We're fixing to come into the greatest blessings that we've ever walked in in our life. Can you say amen? So keep on the cursing us. My God, God's a blessing in here. I've shut the door. Have you? I'm on the wall doing a great work. And I can't come down and argue with all these folks. I'll just have to let the those those things be folded up as a vesture. Glory to God. Glory. I feel the anointing tonight. Amen. And so the Bible says it this way that third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee or a marriage. And the mother of Jesus was there, and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said, They have no wine. And Jesus said, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. How many know that wasn't Jesus as a man speaking then? That was Jesus as God talking. Because he didn't say, Mother, what have I to do with thee? He said, Woman, what have I to do with thee? He's telling her now that that supernatural power didn't come from her. That came from his father. Somebody say, Praise the Lord. And he said, and mother said to the servant, whatever he says to you to do, do it. And there were set six water pots of stone after the matter of purification of the Jews contained two or three firkins apiece. And Jesus said, fill the water pots with water. Amen. Hallelujah. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said, draw out now and bear it unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, he knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew it knew. They knew. And it said the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. Jesus is the bridegroom. Amen. And he said unto him, Every man at the beginning thus set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. Hallelujah. And this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. Hallelujah. And then we go back to Acts 2 and catch that verse in Scripture, them several verses where it said, When the day of Pentecost was fully come, and they were one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven like as of a rushing mighty wind, and it, <coughs> it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance, hallelujah, and the Bible said, Now beginning in the seventh verse, they were all amazed and marveled, saying, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia and Egypt and in parts of Libya about Serene, strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? But others mocking, saying, These men are full of new wine. Hallelujah. They're full of new wine. Praise God. Now when we left here, Sunday night we were dealing with a third day marriage. You remember that? That God had called us to the third day marriage. We went through Ephesians 1, Ephesians 2, 3, 4, and came all the way up to the fifth chapter where Paul gave his sermon to the, about marriage and a husband loving a wife and vice versa. Then he gets down at the end and said, you can use this for such if you'd like, but I want to tell you what I've been talking about. He said, I'm talking about a mystery, and the mystery I've been revealing to you is Christ in His church. Hallelujah. Christ in His church. And he was saying to them, one of the things he said to them was that He might sanctify it by the washing 
of the water of the word. Just like Jesus said, fill the water pots with water. That ain't natural water in our day, friend. That's the word of the living God being washed us away. Brainwashing us, if you will, until all the characteristics of man's doctrine have been purged out of us and a word of due season that is spoken better than apples of gold in baskets of silver. And Isaiah said it this way, for the Lord hath given me the tongue of the learned that I may speak a word of season unto him that is weary. Hallelujah. Them vessels were empty. Them vessels were dried out. Them vessels had residue in them. But he said fill them to the brim with water. Hallelujah. Wash them in the truth. Wash them in the kingdom. Wash them by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Jude said there's a water. Titus rather said there's a washing of three generation that comes by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Comes by the Holy Ghost. Waters out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of the garden flowed one river into four heads. Amen. But the truth is that Paul said the reason he washed such a washing with the water of the word is that he may present his bride, his church, to himself. A glorious church. Not having spot, break, or any such thing. I've heard preachers for years say, Jesus said he is coming back after. He ain't coming back after. He's got a hold of her right now. Glory to God. He ain't never left her. Glory. Glory. And then what did he say was, whatever ain't right, he'll make it right when he gets here. Well, I differ from that. I believe whatever ain't right is getting right right now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. To hear, you, you know, to, to hear the doctrine of, of, of the modern day church tell it that God just going to let this church get totally washed out, beat up, messed up. And just about the time she's ready to give up, then He's coming and take her out of all her sufferings. I mean, I don't got a problem with you. If, if that's what you really think is the truth, I just need you to show me chapter and verse for that. I haven't found it in there. Now, if you've got it, bless God, don't hold us over another minute. Get up and give it right now. I'm telling you, be, you, you'll be hard up to find it. It ain't in there. Glory to God. It's not in there. You won't find it anywhere. Nowhere does it say that the church is going to waste away. Nowhere does it say that the church is going to get worse and worse. Nowhere does it say that the body of Christ will grow weaker and weaker. Nowhere does it say that she'll get sicker and sicker. But it says He will present it unto Himself. A glorious church. Not having stock, wrinkle, blemish, or any such thing. Telling you preachers, you're wrong. You better go back and study the Word of God and find out that the church is the greatest organism of God's power that has ever come out in this earth. Brother, it was for he kissed her in marriage on the day of Pentecost in the upper room. He consummated that proposal. He got inside of her by the Holy Ghost. He indwelled her. I find it impossible to believe that a God inside of anybody will make them weak and sickly and beggarly and foolish and unwise. No, He will present it unto Himself a glorious, shining bride adorned for her husband. Right. I'm telling you, you can you think this narrow-minded if you want to, but any other gospel is a false gospel. Amen. It's not the way. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. You denominational people, the, the way is not your bylaws and your charters and your list of rules and regulations. Jesus said, I am the way. Them disciples said, Lord, we won't know that way. You say we know and we're going that way. Tell us what it is. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Let me tell you, this, this being a third day of marriage tells us it'll be the most excellent thing we've ever witnessed. Right. It will excel any thought we've ever had concerning the body of Christ. It'll be the greatest unveiling of a mystery that has been hid from all the ages. 
Hallelujah. And the new wine will be the consummation gift of this relation. We will know Him in the third round. In the third day truth. Glory to God. We've known Him as Savior. We've known Him as Holy Ghost baptizer. But we're entering into a king and priest realm where we know Him by sonship, by favor to, and by the sealing of the full mind of Christ. We will not have a will of our own in this realm of marriage, but we will be possessed of another world. Hallelujah. We'll have no feeling, no thought outside of Christ Himself. Amen. This new wine is the gift, God's marriage gift. Hallelujah. It's the third day anniversary gift. Glory. He called up a whole shot of a hot Glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When you feel this new wine flow like we've been flowing around here, it's the Lord letting you know I've revealed a party me to you you've never seen before. Glory. God. It's a it's a you you union gift. It's in unison. He drinks it with us. Amen. Amen. See, there's a bride described in the Songs of Solomon. And the first time she sees this wonderful groom, Jesus. Hallelujah. She cries out, let him kiss me. With the kisses of his mouth. Amen. Because of the savor of thy good ointment, thy love is better than mine. Yes. And thy name is his ointment poured for him. Therefore, the virgins love thee. She starts talking about the new wine, the sweetness of the wine that flows in that relationship and how much she wants it. She goes on further and says, Draw me. And we, yeah. plurally speaking of spirit, soul, mind, and body, we will run after thee. She begins to speak about the king taking her into his banqueting house. The only time a king ever took a woman in his banqueting house is to wed her. He's courting her. He's wooing her. Somebody say, praise the Lord. And then she starts to think on this wine and how dried up she is and how languished she is and how wanton she is and cries out, don't look at me. She says, look not upon me because I'm black. I'm black but comely because the sun had beat hard on me because I kept my brother's tenure. I kept the rules of religion. I kept the doctrines of devils. Somebody say praise the Lord. I satisfied man. I satisfied their demands. But she said, my own vineyard have I not kept. My own spiritual walk. I don't know you. I've heard about you all my life, but I don't know you. Brother, when you first get the drink of this new wine, it opens the whole world of knowledge to you. And you say, my God, how did I survive? How did I ever live? What did I do in those days when I only knew of Him instead of knowing Him? Paul said that I may know Him in the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His suffering. Hallelujah. He said... She said, don't you look at me. I'm starved to death. Yeah. I'm blind. I'm dark. I'm dried up. The sun, and you know what he did? He took her in his banqueting house. Yeah. And the Bible said he put one hand under her uh, shoulders and the other one under her head. He turned her head over and said, look in my eyes. Look oh. in my face. Uh, look in my glory. Oh. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13, we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now we know in part, but then we shall know also, even as we are known. Hallelujah. Oh. Yeah. Brother, he looked at her all right. He had already sealed her on her heart. He had already introduced her 
to the seal of redemption. Somebody say praise the Lord. Brother, once God sealed you for redemption, you can't never fall. You can't never fail. You can't never, He'll never, 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 ever, 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 ever take His hands off of you. He's already tasted of the goodness of a relationship with His body, His bride, His church. Hallelujah. And He's bidding the people to come to His banquet and house. Leave your mother's house, He told her. Your mother's house is religion. That's where you grew up in what you were taught all your life. But if you can get out from behind the lattice of man's thinking, glory to God, and get over there where the road is leaping on the hill and see the liberty of the kingdom of God, you leave your mama's house and go to his banquet in the house. Lay down in his lap and let him hold your head and say, look at me, I'm not ashamed of you. Oh, that's against everything we grew up to believe. The men have hollered and heralded for years. No man can look on God and live. Oh, how true that is. But there's something besides a flesh man. There's a spirit man. And brother, this spirit man, God said, I never, never, there's never been a man like Moses in all the earth. He's the meekest man I've ever known. I commune with him face to face. Face to face. Let me tell you. This little bride, she didn't think too much. She said, oh, said, my vineyards is dried up. I hadn't kept my vines. Hadn't kept my grapes. Everything's wasting. My brother over there, he's prosperous. Yeah. Amen. Huh? His vineyards is green. Hello. Yeah. But if that brother had any, any stewardship of Jesus in his heart at all, he'd have never let his vine blossom and let hers go to waste. If he was of the body mentality, he'd have tended her vine just like she tended his vine. But I want to tell you, that's the way these preachers are. They won't go hear nobody preach unless they're the one doing the preaching. Yes, sir, they want their vine to flourish. They want their pockets full of money. They want everything they touch to be blessed. But when it comes to the body, I'll just tell you, you won't like my French one bit for this, but they'll say to hell with them. I'm not fooling with them. I'm not going over there and taking care of them. Let them take care of themselves. Listen, in the body, when one hurts, all of us hurt. In the body, when one cries, everybody cries. In the body, when one shouts, we all shout. In the body, when one gets happy, we get happy with them. Glory to God. If they didn't do nothing to find the shiny nickel on the step and got happy over it, you ought to slap them on the back and say, praise God for nickels. Hallelujah. You can't be a brother running around with a, with a, with a wire full of vines that's full of grapes and then brag about your grapes and somebody pass by your beautiful vineyard and see your sister right there on the right hand side of you or the left hand side of you dried up. The Bible said if any man sees his brother in need and shutteth up his bowels of compassion, how dwelleth the love of God in him? That don't just mean if he needs potatoes and sugar and coffee. That means if he needs the pouring in of the oil and the word of God. My God, whatever he needs, let God use it. He may not need money. He may need a word of prophecy. He may not need a word of prophecy. He may just need an encouragement, uplifting, exhortation. And if you run by him all day while you bring the folks in to see how beautiful your yard is, then I say unto you forever do away with that spirit, uh, that spirit that lusted after the pride of life. Hallelujah. And the things of the world. And, and, and Jesus said, it chokes out the word that is within you, but the word that is sown in good ground bring it forth some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. Yeah. Amen. Sir, Hallelujah. that bridegroom said to her, let me introduce you to something. I've got something I want to let you, I want to let you get a glimpse of. She said, well, where are we going? He said, well, I just thought you'd like to know that i got a vineyard. Yeah. Only vineyard she's ever had is an untapped one. Yeah. Isaiah the fifth chapter, I will sing unto my well beloved a song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. Very fruitful hill in the Hebrew translation to be the horn of the son of oil. And, and said and he planted a choicest vine. And he uh, pruned it. And he dung it. And he hedged it around. And it grew up. And after it grew up, it brought forth wild grapes. Why? It was unpruned. Unkept. Amen. He gave them the life and they did nothing with it. He gave them the ability, the potential to perform. 
and to become kings and priests under their God. And they rejected the king and priest ministry by telling Moses, if God's got anything to say to us, you ask him and tell us. We don't want to hear him talk ourselves. Somebody said, well, what will you do with that vineyard? They asked the Lord, what will you do with that vineyard? He said, I'll turn down the fence and I'll let the armies come in and I'll let them tread it down. But how many know the Bible said in Romans 11 chapter, but there was a wild olive branch. Go and be to God. Hallelujah. Glory. And he plucked us off and laid the axe to the root of the tree we were a part of and grafted us into the glorious sonship of the kingdom of God. And the Spirit cried forth in our hearts, Abba, Father, hallelujah. He made us one. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, the Holy Ghost is pouring it out tonight. There's no effort at all to stand up here and do this right now. Glory. Not a chore to it. I'd rather have this crowd we've got sitting in this room and the Word of God flow this way than to have every seat in this house full and have to climb over ten religious devils a minute just to get the gospel of Jesus out. We're in a day and a time when God's gathering His elect. Hallelujah. And they're hearing a new word. Glory to God. So the Bible said that whenever she was introduced to his vineyard, she immediately knows that it is their vineyard. Yeah. The reason she knows it because she says it out of her own mouth. She said, he wooed her with the promise that the vine was giving forth a smell of grapes. And when she smelled that smell, she said, take away from us the little foxes. Glory to God. Yes. That spoil the vine. For our, our vine. Oh, you are our. Oh, glory. She no more sees that old dried up vine that she thought was her only hope. Glory. But she said, our vine hath tender grapes. Glory. <laughs> now, fox can be many things to many people. Anything that discourages, sends uh, fear your way, or faint-heartedness, or even one time Ezekiel said the prophets had become foxes. Yeah. That God was trying to do something and every time they come along they tore down what God was doing yeah. because they didn't want Him doing nothing. It meant they had to get up and prophesy more. Amen. Say amen. amen. But the pure love that flows from this marriage is the new wine. Because the Song of Solomon chapter 7 and verse 12 said, Let us get up early to the vineyards. Let us see if the vine flourishes and whether the tender grapes appear. That word appear means open up. And there will I give thee my loves. When he starts taking you to the vineyard, it's to give you the wine. Yeah. It's to give you the new wine of his pure love. Agape, love. The word agape means love feast. Hallelujah. Man. We're feasting on a new kind of love yeah. that is shed abroad in our hearts according to right. Romans 5 by the Holy Ghost. Holy Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. See, the wine that will flow from this marriage will not just make one feel good, but it will enforce the greatest love relationship we've ever known Him in. Ever known Him in. The wedding takes place in John 2 in a town called Canaan. Cana. The word has no Greek meaning. You have to go back to the Hebrew. That's a Hebrew word. The word Cana means a reed or a rod. Glory to God. This always speaks of the Christ body. For yeah. Psalms 110 verse 2 said, The Lord will send the rod of His strength out of Zion. Yeah. Glory to God. How many of the Bible said the scepter shall not depart from Judah until Shiloh comes? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is our Shiloh. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it is at the third day wedding that all the natural runs out. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid of that. Let it happen. <coughs> It's going to happen whether you want to or not. If you could picture yourself in a big old bathtub with a with a full stop drain plug and the Lord just took hold of the chain. And you can stand
stand there and whine and ask him not to let it all go if you want to. But everything natural's got to go. Amen. Unbelief's got to go. Amen. Fear's got to go. Doubt's got to go. Anything that limits you from seeing God as he is has got to go. Amen. I mean, it'll gurgle while it goes, but just let it gurgle. Praise it's the, the greatest thing in the world for God to empty out the natural and provide you with a supernatural way of trusting him called the God kind of faith. Hallelujah yeah. to Jesus. Glory. Oh, bless be God. It passes away. The dilemma is only cured, only cured by the spiritual. So you better get spiritual if you ain't already. Bless be God. You better pray spiritual, sing spiritual, testify spiritual, and for God's sakes, read the Bible with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Don't read this book as a natural book. There ain't nothing natural about it. The Holy Ghost men wrote this as they were moved upon by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. And don't be trying to tell nobody nothing against what they're saying in this hour unless you know the Word. Yeah. If you don't know the Word, keep your mouth shut because you'll look like a dummy. You're going to run up with somebody that knows the word and they're going to clean your clock. <laughs> so if you want, if you're an arguer, then bless God, you better have scripture, word, chapter, verse. Amen. 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 You can make Pentecost mad as a wet sitting him just by simply asking him, can you show me where that's found in the Bible? My God, they'll stick their nose up in the air. They'll let you know right properly quick that grandma believed it that way. Grandpa believed it that way. Well, you ought to let them know in the same, uh, uh, and, you know, in the same manner to let the dead bury the dead. Amen. Since when do we go to the grave to get our doctrine? The dead praise thee not. Somebody say amen. amen. Well, glory. Hallelujah. No, sir, the natural is going to run out, friend. Yes, sir. All the natural means of obtaining anything is going to run out. And you won't like this, but it's true of anything. Healing. It'll get to the point where the only way you can be healed is by the power of God. There'll be no other way. Yes, sir. You better believe it will. It'll get to the place in your faith where you'll never have to depend on anything but the Holy Ghost the rest of your life. Glory. Somebody say praise the Lord. It'll be the way in services. These, these men and women will have to throw away their menus and their programs and their fixed sermons and their fixed yeah. outlines and their fixed song programs. Glory to God. We've never run a song sheet in this church. Glory to God. We always just got up and let the Spirit move us on what to do. Hallelujah. And, and though we make notes and write scriptures down, the Holy Ghost is made well aware before any man gets in this pulpit that he can do whatever he wants to anytime he wants to and tear up whatever he needs to. Amen. Men usually have to go this, this here putting a sermon out on the sign three weeks before they ever preach it. How do you know what you're going to preach three weeks from now? I don't know what I'm going to preach an hour from now. How do you know what you're going to preach three weeks from now? All that's going to go. It's got to go. This here bulletin business in the front door telling you keeping track with time in the services to be sure everybody's out by 12 o'clock. I refuse to let a congregation of people out of this church at 12 o'clock on Sunday if I have to talk for five minutes just till it's 12.05. I'll be whipped before I'll get in the habit of everybody thinking they can grab up their duds and get out of here at 12 o'clock noon. I'm telling you there's something more important than feeding your natural body and that's for the spirit man to be lifted up and exalted in the new wine ministry. Glory to God. These lily livered preachers, they're so afraid they're going to lose a tither. I say for everyone you lose, God will anoint and bless somebody financially so they can take the place of them that need it. Glory to God. Holding on to a remnant of people that runs the whole system and they govern it by dictating to the shepherd of that flock how he'll, brother, it's by the Holy Ghost we run the church. It's by the Holy Ghost we preach. It's by the Holy Ghost we sing. It's by the Holy Ghost we lay on the hand. And the people in the crowd has got to be under the same Holy Ghost as the preacher and the singer is because we're a body and we've got to flow together. Amen. I tell all these churches where I go, praise God, I don't know how many I'll go to, but anyway, from where I go, that you say, I 
said, if my crowd shouts, I'll tell you what, I get jealous. I won't down there with them and shout. And if they don't quit soon enough, I'm liable to just get out right down there in the middle of them and go. Because I'm liable. There ain't no use in me sitting up there drying up if somebody's got the victory. I want to get around them and get the victory too, don't you? It's silly and foolish for a man to try to rope a service and hold it. That range, by God, do wine don't work that way. It overflows the fact. Hallelujah! It runs out. You, you can't keep it in a bottle. Glory! It overflows and spills everywhere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, now I'm going to tell you something. That, 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 uh, boy, the Lord's stretching my time tonight. Amen. 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 Uh, one of the marriage things that's happening in this third day level of, of marital relationships with the Lord is this kingdom word is marrying a Holy Ghost anointing. Yeah. Amen. The Spirit and the Word get married, brother. Sister, what, how could they call Because they're one in the same. <coughs> Jesus is the Spirit, but He is the Word. It's not enough to have the knowledge in your head. you got to have the Holy Ghost on. People don't hear you get up and talk and give an old blunt, monotone speech. You can turn the TV on the news and hear that. If you watch the news, I don't watch the news because all the news lie. But I, I do uh, know that some preachers, my God, if I, I can't even listen to them on TV. I mean, I got it playing in the background while I'm doing something else. They're just standing there talking, never do raise their voice, never do get. And I said, say you got to have. It's, it's not in noise. I know that, but I will tell you right now, God ain't. I know God ain't deaf, but he ain't nervous neither. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Most people that say God ain't deaf is trying to find a cop-out hole yeah. for their old dried up spirit. Now how many of you know when the new wine comes, whether you're whispering or singing or prophesying, speaking, testifying, oh exhorting, or just flat out right down the road having a conversation with somebody, if that new wine gets to flow it, you're going to smell it. You're going to taste it. You're going to get intoxicated. Glory to God. You can talk about God in the right spirit and get drunk just sitting there talking to somebody about the Lord. Glory. Yeah. Glory. Glory. There's a love feast on tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. See, this feast is on. I want to tell you something. And when that wine, that natural ran out, their thirst didn't leave. They wanted wine. How, aren't you glad that Jesus said, Blessed are they that hunger and thirst. Amen. For they Glory. shall be filled. Amen. Glory. It was a travesty of that day to run out of wine at feast. <laughs> that was the utmost mark of poverty. And now that in our day, we leave the natural knowing that that which is first told is for the natural, but when it's second picked up, it's for the spiritual, according to 1 Corinthians 15. Then we come to the spiritual side of that and read and find out that it ain't natural poverty, no more spiritual poverty. And we find out that it's that old order around that will not turn loose of the Laodicean age. Bless their hearts, they're going to stretch that thing out because they believe they've been told all their lives. Now I'm not trying to step on nobody, make nobody mad, but I'm gonna tell you something. I will, I'm not gonna be a liar in this pulpit. Now listen, Amen. they think and have been led to believe all their life that that seventh church they that lay out to see, and that's just it. That's it, <laughs> brother. There ain't nothing after that. I'm telling you, they've yeah. taught that. You have taught that. I was taught that. That there was nothing left for the body of Christ. When the whole time just beyond that door, yeah. Amen. there was something called the kingdom age. Yeah. Glory. But bless their hearts, they thought the Lord couldn't send the kingdom age till they was gone for seven years and then come back. Well, the Bible don't 
say no such thing. Jesus said when he stepped out, glory to God, and started preaching, said, I'm telling all of you the kingdom's here right now. Glory to God. He said it ain't meat, it ain't drink. It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, and it coming not with observation, but it is within you. Hallelujah. All right. Woo! Glory to God. He said from the days of John the Baptist unto now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, but the violent take it by force. Hallelujah. Glory. Well, I'll tell you what, if you took that kingdom by force like you took some of them old order doctors, brother, when you went to get the Holy Ghost, now I'm not saying that's old order God, let me clarify that right now. Everybody needs the Holy Ghost and need, need, needs to speak in tongues. As God moves on their mouth and gives them a Holy Ghost breed utterance to utter the language of the kinsmen brethren. But let me tell you something now. You went after that Holy Ghost said a thing you had if you really wanted it. You made your mind up. You couldn't quit. You got to where you couldn't eat. Couldn't sleep until you had the Holy Ghost. Well, I want you to know if a man will take the kingdom of God on like that tonight and say I won't be able to eat or drink or sleep until I know that that kingdom is flowing in me. Hallelujah. they take it by force, you see. They'd start drinking new wine. I don't know about you, but I'm having a ball tonight. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise and the Lord is still stretched my unless my body is slow if it is, don't tell me. <laughs> I ain't through. If you're not through listening, I'm not through talking. Amen. Hallelujah. On, Let me tell you something. They, we, we, everybody's been taught. See, that's a theory. That's not, that's not a doctor. A real doctor is that which comes from God. But see, these doctrines are just, they're, 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 they're theories that men have, have, have passed down from generation to generation. Well, they passed another theory. They said the earth was flat. Yeah. And they passed it from generation to generation. And one man finally got up and said, I've got a revelation. The earth ain't no such a thing. It's round. Oh, they said, you fall right off the end of it. But a few, hallelujah, uh, just a year or so later, Glory to God. The same feller left, made it back home. And they all had to embrace the revelation that the earth was not flat. Yeah. That's a simple, simple, simple thing. But it's the same thing with religious doctrines. What they had in them generation, generation. Nothing left for the church. You know that they preach in their pulpit that after the, the, fourth, the fourth chapter, the first verse of Revelation, you never can find the church no more in the book of Revelation. That's the biggest lie they ever told. My God, over 12 times, there's direct reference to body, bride, saints. Yeah. Why the last words are saying, glory to God. In the book of Revelation, there's a spirit and then the bride yeah. say, come. Amen. But they'll tell you that you can't find the church nowhere in the book of Revelation after the fourth chapter. Well, then how come in Revelation 22, it said the spirit and the bride say, come. Amen. I'm not asking you to believe my theories. I want you to believe the word of God. Yeah. And I'm telling you that the 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 the, the uh, multimedia church of this hour is locked yeah. in that Laodicean realm because they're doing everything they can to mentally stretch that realm out to keep from stepping into the kingdom yeah. age. Yeah. They've been taught all their life to believe. Do you understand this? They've been taught all their life to believe that kingdom age can't come while they're here. Yet Jesus said, I brought it with me. Glory to God. I brought it to earth with me. I brought it to earth with me. So they're trying to stretch that out. And here's what they're saying. And you know they're saying it. And God said they were saying, Oh, I'm rich. I'm increased with goods. I have need of nothing. Leave me alone like I am. Let me sit, soak, and sour in these traditional beliefs I've had for years. And woe be to the man who seeks to know God in a greater measure. He's an outcast. He's a refugee. They leave him alone. They lay him aside. They Amen. cast him off. Amen. But Jesus said, He that cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast him out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. And you've got to dare to come to the point of faith that you don't need religion to survive. God is bigger than man's delusions. There's a world of righteousness and peace and joy 
You see, there's a feast on, and the wine of yesterday has run out. The old wine's gone. Hallelujah. It's a third day feast. A feast when all that's offered is nothing less than fullness and fatness. It's a feast of tabernacles. It's a feast where there is bread, meat, oil, and wine. Yes. Glory to God. Oh, Hallelujah. There's a way with all that living and struggling from one blessing to the next. Hoping to God when you get there on Wednesday, there will be another little trickle enough to stir you up and keep you another few days when you know good well most of the time that trickle is done trickled out when you get there. That's right. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Let me give you this verse. Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 19 says that a feast is made for laughter and wine maketh merry. A feast is made for laughter and wine maketh merry. The people that are drinking this wine are happy people. The people that are drinking this wine have the joy of the Lord in their souls. The people that are drinking this wine are not worried about life. They're trusting in God and they're shouting their way through. Somebody say praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah to God. All right, let me give you another. This is one I think Chris quoted Sunday. Isaiah 25 and verse 6 says that in this mountain, that's the mountain of the house of the Lord, this is our mountain, amen, shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines yeah. on the leaves, yeah. Yeah. and fat things full of marrow, yeah. and a wine on the leaves well refined. Yeah. Somebody say praise yeah. the Lord. Now the phrase fat things in that verse means oil every time. So there is oil and there is wine and there is wine refined. Well refined. The word well refined means pure as in the pure blood of the grape. Meaning there are no particles and there are no additives yeah. of man's touch. Yeah. It is strictly Holy Ghost. Yes. Yeah. Strictly Holy Ghost. All the guests, all the family. All the people are gathered and they want wine. Hallelujah. The thirst was there. And Mary knew the man with the wine was there to quench the thirst. Yes. Because ever since she had been visited by the angels of God, she had pondered things in her heart that she spoke to no man. There was a revelation that she possessed. Hallelujah. I don't care what the Catholics teach there is no co redemptiveness with Christ whatsoever. In Mary, she knew that when it came to the God side of Jesus, she was like us. She had to be born again. That's the reason she went to the upper room on the day of Pentecost and got the Holy Ghost with all the rest of them. Amen. Amen. They, they teach that she had her own private ascension. That's, that's, that's baloney. No, sir, she ascended when the rest of them did. Amen. When the day of Pentecost was fully yeah. done. Hallelujah. My Lord. And so this Mary who knew that Jesus was more than a man, she knew it and half the world don't know it today. Amen. He ain't no second person. He is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. That's what Colossians said. Yeah. They ain't no second nothing in Jesus. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the first and the last. And there's everything in between. He ain't a member. He's the whole thing. These churches teach it. He's just a member of the Godhead. He is not. Colossians said, In Him dwelleth. Well, glory. All the fullness of the Godhead bodily and we are complete in Him who is the head of all the power. Right. Amen. Not God, if you don't know the Word, shut up and go study it. And quit making people sit through all your mistakes. Hello. I don't care if you think you're, you're so holy.
holiness, nobody can't touch you. If you don't know the word, you got no business offering people nothing because how can they eat anything? They'll only eat your opinions of it. Amen. Bless God, we ain't got no opinions to hide behind around here. We believe in the pure blood of the grave. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. I want to say that some more. Oh, Mary knew. She knew that was God. Who now my son died? That angel told her, said he should, he should be called Emmanuel. God with us. But she said, you get ready to name him. Because there's only one name given among men whereby we must be saved. When you get ready to name him, because there's only one name in whom the whole family in heaven and in earth is named. You name him, I'm going to name him, I'm going to tell you, he was already named before he was ever formed as a human in her womb. Heaven called him by name. And the name was Jesus. Glory. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people. From their sins. Somebody say amen. Glory. Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of Jesus. Glory. People are praying in the name. People are preaching in the name. People are bless somebody in the name. They'll lay hands in the name. But they won't bury in the name. But I, whatever I do in word or deed, I do all. In the name of Jesus. Fulfilling this word right here, brother. If you ain't know, if, if you if you're crossed up on that, you just flat don't know the Bible, folks. Now I'm telling you, let's get these religious denominational glasses off of our face and quit yeah. trying to make this fit a mold that's man-made. Because this is the mold whereby we are to be conformed to. Mary, knowing he was God, said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus, knowing that she was not addressing, and I hope you can get this because I'm closing on this note, Jesus knew she was not addressing him as a man. Yeah. Who knows? I'm so tall of Glory. I get tired of these people that preach that Jesus emptied himself of all of God to become a man. I don't believe that for one minute. He was 100% God and 100% man. Amen. He wasn't half God and half man. He was all God and all man at the same time. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Jesus knew Mary wasn't talking to his flesh. She knew his talk. Oh, come to the who seek Talabah. She knew he was talking to that God on the inside of him. And he responded back in a way so that she would know that he connected with her in the Holy Ghost. And he knew what she was talking about. He said, woman, what am I to do with thee? Oh, God. What I'm about to do, I didn't get out of your womb. Yeah. What I'm about to do, I didn't get just because you was my mother. Amen. What I'm about to do, I didn't get it out of your natural uh, 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 nourishments. But what I'm about to do, glory to God, has nothing to do with you, but it has everything to do with the God on the inside of me. Hallelujah. Yes. Woo. Woman, what have I to do with thee? I'm God. She knew what he meant. Oh, she didn't cop no attitude and say, I'm his mother. No, no, she was not addressing him as a mother. And she turned around and told the servant, whatever he says unto you to do, do it. I'm going to tell you, when you got a revelation of who Jesus is, and you conform to that revelation as one, and you believe that he's God eternal. That he's wonderful, he's counselor, he's mighty God, he's everlasting father, he's prince of peace. Somebody say amen. 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 When you no longer separate him from the power that he is. And I'm preaching better now, I want to use shout right now. That's a fact. When you quit separating him from a deity. When you quit making him second. When you quit acting as if he's just a good man who showed up and sat down with another yeah. two and start seeing him as the all-powerful God, hallelujah, who is more than enough. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you, you've just uncovered and, and discovered right. the greatest flow that you'll ever receive in your lifetime. Because if you get that, you've got the fullness of the God, Him, bodily, and Jesus' body, and you're looking at it right around you tonight, yeah. glory to God. So tonight the wine flows from the true Godhead. Hallelujah. Jesus and His glorified body 
I'll ask you like one great preacher asked, was a Godhead in Jesus or was Jesus in the Godhead? The Bible said it was in Him. Amen. And for too long we've approached God, first of all, thinking, Stan, women and I, thinking that He's a million miles away. And then we approach Him, or I don't, but I did, thinking that one's in one place and one's in another. And the third one is somewhere else. And we're so confused we don't even know who God is. John didn't see three thrones when he got caught up in Revelation. Right. He saw one throne. <laughs> he on that throne. Looks right. like unto the Lamb of yes. God who taken the world the sin of the world. Amen. Somebody say amen. And I want you to know it was part of that written on that revelation that caused Mary to believe that he could turn loose new wine right yeah. there and my son died. Hallelujah. He said, my hour's not yet come. You know what he meant? I'm not yet going back to be glorified with that same glory which I had with the world before the world was. <laughs> but because you believe that what I was there, I am right now. Amen. Hallelujah. And that, we'll leave it with that. We'll pick up there Sunday morning. Brother, you've got to know who He is. Yeah. You've got to have a devout, firm revelation in your heart. Hallelujah. Yes. You've got to get so convinced of God and that Jesus is everything and that you don't need nothing but Jesus. Amen. Faith, my God, coming by hearing. <laughs> yeah. And hearing comes by the Word of God. I want you to know people have been chasing rainbows for years trying to figure out how, who God is just to keep from saying that He's Jesus. Yeah. Well, I want you to know if you're ashamed of that, we've really got problems in getting you into this new wine message. Because I promise you that the, the, the beginning of everything God does is when you get into the revelation of knowledge of who He is. Amen. And when you see Him as He is, you start becoming like Him. Yeah. Amen. Because you see Him as He is and not as another has portrayed Him. Right. And when you see Him as He is and become like Him, guess what? New wine. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Praise the Lord.